We've all had those roommates or maybe it's siblings that we're living with or maybe a spouse and we start to realize we've all got those weird, quirky habits that we have. For me, I realized a couple years into our marriage with my wife, man, every time she went to the refrigerator, she'd pick up the, the milk carton, she would shake it, and then dump it into the coffee or the cereal that she was making. And the first couple times I thought it was strange, but you know, maybe it's near expired and she's checking for chunks or something like that. But weeks go by, months go by, she continues to shake the milk every single time and then dump it into the milk or, or cereal or coffee. And so one day I finally asked her, I was like, what are you doing? You shake it every single time, then you dump it out. And she turns to me and says, you, what do you mean you don't shake it every time? And so she reaches out to her family and asks, why do we do this? Well, come to find out the rest of her family still shakes the milk and it's because the refrigerator ran just a little bit colder and so there'd be ice chunks in it and they would shake it up every time and then dump it out. Hey, dosers, thanks for joining us today. My name is Chase, and today we're talking from a, a proverb that Solomon wrote. It's Proverbs 22, 6, and every time I think and read through this verse, I just think of, okay, we've all got these habits that we have. Proverbs 22, 6 says this, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. See, I, I love the habits, this, this milk habit that my wife has. I love these habits that we're creating in our children's ministry, in our student ministries, because the things that we're training them now, the things that we're developing right now, they're going to carry on for almost the rest of their life. Some of the habits they're going to break, but man, some of these things they're going to hold on to. I love looking at our youth ministries and what our junior high does, and they're starting now to get into life groups, and they're starting to ask questions and walk through scripture and have serious spiritual conversations. They're starting to ask for prayer requests and pray for each other, which prayer, what an incredible thing we teach our kids. Even in preschool rooms, we get our kids together and we start asking, hey, what are some prayer requests and how do we pray for each other through these? I think of my two-year-old. She's just starting to learn how to talk. And even she knows when we sit down at the dinner table and we ask her, hey, will you pray for our meal? She gets the keywords out. She talks about Jesus, food, throws out a couple friends' names and says amen. The habits that they're forming now in these young, young ages, there's not an early enough time that we can start training our kids some of these spiritual development things so that as they grow older, they won't stray away from those things. I think about memorizing the Bible, some of my most fond memories of Sunday school was teachers investing in me, walking through the same Bible verse over and over and over again. And those are the things that I remember to this day still. Now, let me remind you, this is a proverb. So this is Solomon's, hey, best practices. It's not a one for one. If you do this, then your kid will end up spiritually healthy and mature. Eventually, our kids have to make that decision for themselves. But if it's a proverb, this is a best practice. If we train our kids, then here's the best chance that we can give them them to be a spiritually healthy, mature Christian, someone that's not necessarily just a consumer of the church, but a producer, creating disciples and helping other people. See, they start to learn in junior high school, hey, it's okay to get in groups and talk about spiritual things. It's okay for them to sit down during meals and start praying for things, start praying for other people. Memorizing scripture becomes a habit, and it's just like that milk carton. It might be years and years from now, we don't know why we do the things that we do, but then we look back and we see, oh, I was being trained and what it looks like to have a healthy spiritual relationship with the Lord. And so let me just take a quick second and say thank you. Thank you to the children's ministry team. Thank you for, man, if you volunteer with our youth ministry teams, because you're not just babysitting. You're doing so much more. You are training children. You're starting them off in the way that they should go in order to hopefully when they turn old, not turn from it. And parents, man, let me say thank you to you too, because sometimes we're at our wits end. I know it's difficult, but you're doing something that's generational. It's not just for you. It's not just for your kids. You're creating habits that are helping them produce something for generations to come. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.